MCH course, uh, Professor Rami Abud. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here with you in Agra to talk about something that I haven't talked about before, understanding medical journals, indexing, and impact factor. I have so many hats in my role at the University of Dundee, but today I'm talking about something related to my new role that I took over a year ago as the editor-in-chief of the Foot Journal. What does it mean to actually browse through our intensive literature in medical journal? Dr. Parag earlier on talked about the numbers of journals available in the literature and encouraging you profusely to actually publish, undertake research, do your best to enlighten others about what can be improved in the medical sector. So is the question, do you really want to browse and understand medical journals or in fact understand the question about research and what you're researching for and why? Do we really want to flood the market with papers and just papers, or do we want to make a difference in the medical arena? I would think the latter is the more appropriate one. I was recently at a, the editor's conference organized by Elsevier in Prague, and Andrew Plum was one of, the, one of their managers, actually came out with these three quotations, and if you can read them quickly, you will realize that we are actually flooded with a lot of papers. In any discipline you're studying, if you want to go through every single article published, it will take you a decade, you will die, and you will never finish finding what you were looking for. If you take the second quote saying that this is truly the decade of the journal, and we should seek to limit their numbers rather than to increase them, since there are many, too many of them. When do you think these quotes were said? Any idea? You want to take a guess? Because I was surprised myself when I discovered that these quotes go back as far as the 1600. Have we learned anything since then? Absolutely not. The actual rate of publication has tremendously increased. We're talking over 40 million publications. 20 million in the last 20 years alone. And with the general population increasing, no wonder we're going to have many more papers. So we do really need to publish, or we need to publish something that is going to make a difference. Who is to be blamed? The publishers or the journals? We have so many of them. Of course they are interested in that. It's good business. And it is you and I who are feeding into it as scholars and as academics. We want to improve our careers. We want to progress forward. And the way to do it is through publication and research. Most editors and most reviewers and of all journals do it part of their scholarships and academic careers. They don't get paid for it. The person or the individuals that are making the money are the publishers. There are too many journals on the market, in my opinion. If you take Elsevier alone, the publisher of my journal, they have over 2,000 journals, oh, sure. over 20,000 books. You have the next paper. They publish at least a quarter of the papers on the market. So just imagine how many articles are being published yearly across the various publishers. So it's not the actual understanding of medical journals. I think you need to understand research and the research question, as Dr. Parag alluded to earlier on. Indexing, in my opinion, is a bit more important. It is important because it is the medium that others will be able to find your published research. And if you don't have your journal indexed, then you are in a bit of trouble. But every journal when it's launched is not indexed. And it's important to actually attract a good caliber of reviewers and editorial board members in order to have a solid content to get the journal indexed. Once that index, then you are on the right track. And the buzzword that you always hear is impact factor. But in the medical arena, in order to get towards that, you need to, uh, to aspire to have your journal indexed in PubMed or Medline. So when you get to impact factors and you go through the web, you get 
all these lists according to the various disciplines. In orthopedics, there are many. I'm listing the top 24. And you can see that they vary from 4.4 all the way down to 1.8. And if you go through the list, you go to 0.2 or something. What does that mean? Does that mean that journal one is better than journal two? That's what the impact factor would like us to believe. But how does it really work? Now, if you compare across disciplines and you go for the Lancet, for example, you're talking about 40 as an impact factor. It differs from one discipline to another. It doesn't mean that in cancer, the journals are better than in orthopedics. It's a different discipline and we should not mix up these things. So let's look at the equation that they use in impact factor. It's simply based on the average of citations on the papers that were published in the two preceding years. And according to that number, then the impact factor is calculated. If we take for an example, in 2008, if the impact factor is three, it means that there were three citations per average per article published. So one article could be six, one could be zero. The average is three. That doesn't mean that all the papers in that particular journal are top-notch scientific journals. So basically, if you devise the equation of A, the number of citation, over B, the citable table, then you'd have an equation of A over B will give you the impact factor. So there is a game to play there. If you increase A, then your impact factor will increase. If you reduce B, the same thing will happen. And if you increase A and reduce B at the same time, you are really winning the game. But that does not really measure the quality of the articles published in the journal. So what would you do then? Taking your president's theme, unite to learn, learn to unite, definitely you can say learn to publish, publish to learn. And I think it's a very important message to take away. When I was approached in 1998 to join to join the foot journal by the editor as part of the International Advisory Board, the message was clear. We need to provide a multidisciplinary platform that never existed. And if you look at the actual listed articles in the impact factor list, there are only <coughs> two foot and ankle journals that are not really dealing with a multidisciplinary team. And the task that was assigned to me is that we need to make this journal indexed and we need to try to get an impact factor. And then this is where you go from research to learn, learn to research. So in effect, if we learn how to research, we can build up and unite a team of researchers and the reverse is absolutely correct. If we are a team united, we can learn how to research. So an important message when you're choosing the journal you want to publish for, it's not only impact factor, it's not index, go and find out who are the editors, who are the uh, editorial board members and the reviewers. Because what you want to publish, you want to publish in a journal that is going to really upheld science above impact factor. In our journal and over the last 10 years, working with the various editors before I took over the role, we have assembled such a distinguished list of members on the advisory board and the editorial board in order to achieve our tasks in index media, but preserving that foot needs a science base to improve surgery. So a brief history about the actual course has led us, after losing the British Orthopedic Foot and Ankle Surgery Society in 1997, to bring them back on board and have them affiliated with the journal as soon as I took over uh, last year. And that's an important task that we have managed to achieve in order to push ahead with the impact factor for the journal. So what, what, what would you do next? Having both us on board as well as the uh, American College of Foot and Ankle Orthopedics and Medicine, it's the right opportunity and time to go for the impact factor. And that's what we've done. We have applied for the preliminary count and the actual outcome came much better than I expected. But is this the message that I really want to pass on to you? No. What I want to pass on to you is that don't only think impact factor. Think, is that the journal that will suit best my research, 
my publication. This is where the most readers are going to benefit from it. And if it does, look at the three key words. Understanding medical journal, it's very important to be able to critique the papers irrespective of which journal and which author they belong to. Impact, I would say it's a game. Go and read the declaration of DORA that was published in May 23, which I fully support. Indexing is very important in order to find articles. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rami Abaud.